We're on our way to Fort Worth, Texas. This is the Oakwood Cemetery in Fort Worth. It's located at 701 Grand Avenue. When we arrived here, as you can see, they they just turned out from a funeral, so we had to sit here and wait a minute. We're trying to locate the grave of James Brown Miller, or uh, he's sometimes called Killer Jim Miller, or Deacon Jim Miller. I want you to look at this skyline here of Fort Worth from Jim Miller's grave. And it makes you wonder what the skyline looked like in 1909 when Jim was buried. I imagine it was quite different. This is Jim's tombstone here. He was born in 1861 and he died in 1909. He was only 47 years old. Now next to Jim was his buried his wife, Sarah Francis. And everybody called her Sally. And Sally died in 1938. Now this is Jim and Sally and one of their four kids. They married in 18 and 88. By all appearances, a respectable family. Sally lived 29 years longer than Jim, but uh, Jim's life was cut short by a lynch mob, of course. Some people say that Jim started out early, that he actually killed his grandma and his grandpa when he was eight years old. I don't know if that's true or not, but I do know his mother's couldn't handle him anymore, so she sent him to live with his older sister, Georgia, and her husband, John Coop. And John Coop is a man that Jim fairly hated. A few years later, Jim Coop ends up dead in his own bed at home, shot with a shotgun, which is Jim's favorite weapon. They tried and convicted Jim for it, but he got out on a technicality. Now, this is Jim in his long frock coat, and I want to tell you that Jim had an air of respectability about him. He always dressed in the best expensive clothes. Uh, he wore diamond, a diamond ring. He wore diamond stick pins. Jim was liked by everybody, except for the family of the people that he shot in the back from ambush. But other people thought he was wonderful because he went to church all the time. He quoted scriptures. Uh, he didn't believe in drinking, and he didn't believe in using tobacco. And they said he was a mild-mannered man, and he was always polite. Except Jim knew he was addicted to killing. So he decided, if I'm going to do some killing, I might as well get some money for it. Now, the thing is, this picture here, Jim is sitting at a gambling table. So evidently, he wasn't against gambling. Notice the drinks on the left there the man's holding in the tray. I wondered if that's for Jim that don't drink. In 1904, Jim was paid $500 to kill Lubbock attorney James Jarrett, who represented some farmers against the cattlemen's interest. That same year, he killed T.D. Frank Ford, fourth a real, uh, real estate man in Austin. And in 1906, 
Miller was paid $1,800 to kill U.S. Deputy Marshal Ben Collins. He shot him in the back with a shotgun. He was arrested, but he was released because all the witnesses were killed. Now, this is Sheriff Bud Frazier from Paso uh, Pecos, Texas. On two occasions, Frazier shot it out with Miller. He could wound Miller, but he couldn't kill him. He shot him several times in the chest, but it didn't do any good. Now, this was on two different occasions. He didn't know that Miller was wearing a metal breastplate that was keeping him from uh, dying. But when Miller uh, finally recuperated from the last shootout, he caught the sheriff, who was an ex-sheriff then, playing cards in a saloon, and he walks up behind him with a double-barrel shotgun and kills him. Now, for some reason, they let him go. I guess I wouldn't want to testify against him. That's the thing about Miller was, uh, if you testified against him, you ended up dead. And everybody knew it. And that happened to him time after time. Now, this is the famous lawman, Pat Garrett. You know, the one that killed Billy the Kid. In 1908, Pat was in a land squabble with a man by the name of Wayne Brazels. Now, now Brazels had a, a, a lease to, on Garrett's land, and Brazels started running goats on the land, which he knew that, uh, that Garrett would hate. So they got in a squabble, and they made some serious threats towards one another, and the people later on think that that was probably a setup so that Brazel could use that as an excuse for self-defense. Now, this is, this is Garrett and his wife. Garrett and a prospective buyer of his land, Carl Adamson, they was riding in a buckboard across the, uh, the uh, plains, and they was headed towards uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico, when, uh, and this, this is... Uh, this is Brazels right here, sitting down. And uh, when they run into Brazels. And when they did, Brazels rode along beside him. Now, all we know is the story pretty much as Brazels and Adamson's told. This is Adamson here. Because when they went in to tell the sheriff that they had, that he, Brazel had killed Garrett in self-defense, the sheriff goes back out to check the spot. They just leave him laying there in the desert where he was shot. The sheriff finds him face down. He finds him, his pants unzipped, which would probably indicate that he was doing other things other than trying to reach for a gun to shoot Brazels with. And oh yeah, he was shot twice in the back. They later on found a spot a hundred yards or so away that it looked like somebody had been waiting in ambush. Now this is the spot that they left Garrett in. And that's how Jim Miller got tied up in it because uh, Brazos was actually acquitted of for self-defense of killing Garrett. Now that one is sort of hard to figure out. Now, in, 19, in 1909, in A-Day, Oklahoma, this is the last man that Killer Jim got to kill. And uh, he was paid supposedly $1,700 by Jesse West, Joe Allen, and Barry Burles. And they were, this is, this is a United States Marshal Allen Gus Bobbitt. Well, he was on his way home and he was shot in the back. But they they got uh, they got Killer Jim for it, and they also got the uh, the ones that paid him. And instead of waiting on, they thought this case was really thin, so instead of waiting on him to go to trial, good citizens decided to take things in their own hands. They they rushed to the jail. They took him back to an open barn, a 
back behind the jail and strung them up. Now Jim confessed to killing 51 people. Before they hung him, he took his ring off and he asked that they give it to his wife. And, uh, and he took a stick pin off and said to give it to the jailer because the jailer was real good to him. Uh, he would bring him steaks to eat. Jim really thought he was going to get away with it again because the evidence was real slim. And that's the reason that the uh, good citizens just hardly couldn't afford uh, to let Jim do it legally. So then they brought Jim back to here. And this is a resting place for Jim Miller. He's been here looking at this Fort Worth skyline change for over a hundred years. Jim Miller, a very, very respectable man.